pushing complications and current concept. It starts from Codivella, 1905, who started using skeletal traction, then Abbott. Daniel Breakthrough was in reserve. Dr. Kamal, please stay there. If you can raise your voice a little bit, please. Okay. The real breakthrough was in reserve. There is no doubt. We started working by Lazar of 1983 in my university. Professor Kazem brought everything, even the hand stuff to our department. And we started working 37 years ago. I published this paper in the Journal of Orthopedics and Traumatology, the official journal of the um, Orthopedic Association, the Italian Orthopedic Association, about my points of view uh, of limb blending. And if you are interested, it's an open access, so you can get it if you want to. If you think to all the old Egyptian history, there was special treatment for the um, short people or dwarfs. Many of the divine protectors in their pantheons were deformed. This is God Bess and this is God Beta. You know the belly dancing. Belly dancing is, you know, is very old in the history of Egypt. And you see in the temple, all the belly dancers are tall, except the short one. You see the short one. They were treating all the people the same. There was no discrimination 5,000 years ago. This was the real humanity. How they were dealing with the short people. Snip. Snip was a very important man, very rich, very wealthy. It's like a prime minister at that time. He was a condoplasic, you see the temples. He was married to a normal tall girl and he has two children, normal children. This, this is how they were treating the handicapped and the short or the dwarfed people in old Egypt. You see the butcher, very short one, musicians, they were all having normal jobs. So actually, that's why the old Egyptians or the ancient People were not famous about bone lengthening. They didn't need bone lengthening. What's the aim of bone lengthening? <clears throat> Limb length inequality, you want to equalize the lens, you want to have a functional improvement or cosmetic. There's nothing wrong with cosmetic improvement. And this is an example of lengthening and deformity correction, very short segment and rotational deformity 180 degrees, this is the patella, and this is the heel. So the heel lies in front, and this is the patella. So we did lengthening here, and rotational. Rotational looks like lengthening in this direction. You see with the derotation and lengthening at the same time. The picture before and after. Again, this is lengthening on both sides. You see, 110 degrees, 110 percent of the original length of the hand for arm. Sometimes it's also changing lives. You see, this is traumatic crushed amputation of the foot, which had been treated microsurgical and it worked out. So we had to do 22 centimeter lengthening, more than 100 percent lengthening. So sometimes bone lengthening again is changing lives of the people. Nothing wrong with cosmetic lengthening, you see here. About 10 centimeter lengthening. Nothing wrong. It's very cheap here if you want to do it cosmetic lengthening. And we do it for ordinary people. They are farmers, so there is no problem at all. She's 130 
centimeter length and she wants to have lengthening on both sides, you see. It's not a fancy operation or something. The biology of the lengthening, it depends upon the general biologic law, tension stress of the lizard, nothing new. Which is gradual traction on living tissues creates stresses that can stimulate and maintain the regeneration of active growth of certain tissues. So if you have an adequate blood supply, you can have a regenerative, which develops along the axis of the applied traction. This is the traction along the axis you have the regenerative. Corticotomy, we believe in corticotomy. Some people don't, they do osteotomy. Actually, we believe in corticotomy that you don't disturb the blood supply. The biology in three stages, the latency period, corticotomy, and you wait from five to 15 days, then gradual distraction and consolidation. The evolution of limb lengthening has two wings, evolution in the devices, and the biologic solutions. Most of the people are interested in the devices, which I think it's not that important. The most important is the biologic solutions. The evolution of the biologic solutions or this to stimulate the regeneration area, area. Most of the people complain of the long time till consolidation. This is the real complaint of the patients. So we have many advances, systemic, the, the use of bisphosphonates, high dose of alindronates, calcitonin, nerve growth factors, local, bone morphogenic proteins, platelet-rich plasma, and stem cells. Still in the infancy, but we think this is the real evolution. For the devices, we started from skeet attraction, unilateral fixator, circular fixator or lizard, computer-assisted, as TSF, hexapod, and finally, the internal bone lengthening nails, albizia, ice D, the, the, then finally, fit bone and the precise. We have many techniques regarding the implants. Lengthening, the nailing, we don't use it because of the pentrach infection, because of, if you have one case of DB infection, you will never do it in your life. Because you have this danger of infection and you had one case. Lengthening over elastic nails, lengthening over submuscular plating, or lengthening the plating. Again, if you have one case of infection, you will never do it again. And we had one too. And the internal lengthening devices. We're not going through this. Starting from albizia till the magnetic precise nail. What are the indications of limb lengthening? Again, it's very controversial because people put to the rule. If you have less than two centimeters, you don't do lengthening from two to four, it's the gray zone. And after four, it's absolute indication. We don't think so. We lengthen some people because they have two centimeters shortening, but they have short heel and they're limping. Can you imagine limping, limping, uh, quite apparent limping in a girl because she had only two centimeters, but she have very short heel in some cases, which adds to the shortening. Dwarfism, cosmetic limb length discrepancy. The indications for the motorized nails or magnetic nails are a bit different because we have some problems, some problems of limits. You have limits for acute deformity correction. You cannot have significant deformity corrections with nailing. If you have previous infection, nobody speaks about previous infection. I don't know, perhaps because the infection in our area is far different from the infection in the Western world. It's, it's, it's far worse. The diameter of the bone, it's very important. You have a very small diameter. Can you put a nail? The distance. Because for, for me, eight centimeters is a short distance. Many of our people, they need more than eight centimeters. I know that some people, they take the patient to the operating again and they change the distractor to have more lengthening. But again, you have a short segment, which is biomechanically not good enough for the the stability. And this is an example of fibular hemilia, 
with a deformity and shortening, and you do both gradually at the same time. Complications? It's a huge talk, and we are preparing now meta-analysis about the complications. How they are related to the surgical load? When the people speaks about uh, prosthesis, total knee, total hip, they always speak about the surgical load. This surgeon or this hospital is doing um, 500 cases per year. This hospital is doing 1,000 cases per year. Or this surgeon is doing 50, 50 cases per year, so he's a casual surgeon. You cannot count on his experience or something. But if you come to Lanthry, it's a bit strange. Look to the papers. This paper by Lascom, it speaks about 32 cases by over 30 years by multiple surgeons. So each surgeon experience is something like 0.2 patient per year. And they are giving us their experience for the God's sake. How can you give you your experience and your experience is 0.2 patient per year? Anyhow, look to the other paper. Over 14 years, they are doing 39 cases and it is multi-center. So the, the surgeon experience is 0.1 patient per year. But they are giving us our experience, their experience. A bit strange. In general, the complication, the most important complication is pentrike infection, which is quite possible with external fixator, poor genetic formation, premature consolidation of the genetic axial malalignment for long distances. I look at this case of uh, malunion, which had been treated by lengthening before. We did osteotomy in the same place of, or in the degenerate here. And, and uh, the bridement lower there at compression. And we had premature uh, consolidation of the degenerate two times in this patient. There is no rule at all. This is premature consolidation, you see here. And in such a case, we continue the distraction till breakage occur or something like closed geotomy. And we had another premature consolidation. When we reached the, our target of lengthening, we had this severe deformity because of the very strong muscles. And we did gradual correction. We applied distractor from the medial side and hinges from the lateral side. Then we corrected the axis of the femur. And we had in this 42 years old man, another 11 centimeter femoral length. When we do lengthening, as you see, we try to avoid the common peroneal by applying the wire from the fibula, as you see here, and we continue till it's flush with the fibula. So you don't come closer to the common peroneal. When you look to the intramedullary nails, we have many complications. We have too many complications. Actually, they show us the complication at the end of the patency. So usually when each type of nail continued for nine years, in the 10th year, they started to show us the complications over the years. What are the complications of precise nail? Now I'm preparing, um, we are the, at the end of it, a meta-analysis about the complications of the precise nail and Baumgart nail on the field wall. And I will show you how we are biased towards doing um, the intramedial nails. And the complications are not the same like a fixation. It's far worse, especially if you have infection. Physiotherapy. In our patients, we, we don't have a specialized center. I see on the internet that uh, this is the most important specialized center, surgeon for, uh, center for limb lengthening, and this is the most important specialized center for limb lengthening. You can find many of them on the internet. We don't have a specialized center. We treat the patient individually, and you see here. We allow the patient to go to the swimming pool, to the shore, and to walk, use the computer. It's an individual work. Hospital stayed only one day or a few hours. Most of the cases, they leave the hospital in the same day for, to decrease the costs. 
For achondroplasia, you have many cases of achondroplasia, many cases of achondroplasia. Most of them are very poor. What we usually do, we have the first lengthening at age five, at this patient, and we do femoral at age nine, second lengthening, tibial 11, humoral lengthening, 15. We finish before going to the university. Very important point. Because we think that the psychological problems can, come when the patients, they go to the university when they are 16. We try to avoid everything before the adolescence, before the psychological problems. So we finish at the age 15, even the humoral lengthening. And this is an example of this girl, tibia lengthening for 17 centimeters. Both sides, we have axial malalignment and we correct it gradually. Femoral lengthening about 12 centimeters. Femoral and tibial. She came late for humoral lengthening on both sides. For 10 centimeters. Not only for cosmetic reasons, because of the function too, because she needs the to have enough length of the forearms because of the of the humerus for the perineal, perineal hygiene. This is 53 years old female. She's a professor of medicine with achondroplasia. I advised her by lengthening, but she came 20 years later at age 53 because of the severe deformity and started to feel that she, she will never be able to walk with did bilateral corticotomy and lengthening. There is no age limit. <clears throat> For cosmetic lengthening, we have to think about the reality and the expectations because sometimes they are not the same. Psychiatric evaluation is mandatory for our patients to exclude bone body dysmorphic disorder. And usually we have uh, uh, longer distances for length, not five centimeters or four centimeters. We don't know this. We, we see in the papers how they lengthen for four centimeters or four centimeters. Not for our patients, not for our patients. For the upper extremity lengthening, we have many cases for upper extremity lengthening, and we didn't notice any deterioration of the function. The indications, again, for the upper extremity is controversial, for chondroplasia, hereditary multiple exostosis, physial growth arrest, amputation, infection, shortened, shortening from trauma, you see here is trauma and herbs palsy, both of them with 10 centimeter humor shortening. At the end of distraction, and you see here, forearm lengthening, 110% of the original length, and we didn't have a problem. Phalangeal lengthening, we use panic fixator most of the time, it's easier. Phalangeal lengthening, metatarsal, metacarbal lengthening. Do we have a limit for lengthening? Yes, I think in the English literature they speak about 20% because they have an experimental study on rabbits and in rabbits when they lengthen them more than 20% they have more complications. And you all know that we are not rabbits, so we don't follow this, follow this rule. And this is an example in congenital problems, if you have a tibial hemimelia, and we gradual descent of the fibula, and this is lengthening for 10 centimeters, there's more follow up, more lengthening for 10 centimeters. You see the range of motion. Not 20 percent at all. Most of the complications reported in the English literature are hypothetical. It's not coming from doing large number of people or something. And this is the end picture. Humor lengthening again. I've learned it from the basics at again 20 percent. And this is one of the, my early cases with the deformities, lengthening. You see again, 115% of the original length. 
Nothing happened to the shoulder, nothing happened to the people. Because the, the people they dealt with the humerus as a femur. The humerus is not a femur. Again, do we have a limit, 20% for lengthen? You see here, this is crushed, amputated foot. And the surgeon, the micro, uh, for microsurgery, did, they removed all the segment to have shortening, to allow for grafting and repair. And it worked out for them, but after six months, they presented to me with non-union and malaligned and severe shortening with it corticotomy with comminution perhaps it was okay for comminution five centimeter lengthening 10 centimeter 15 centimeter 22 centimeter lengthening and the union and correction of the deformity. So 22 centimeter lengthening, there's no place for the rule 20% or something. Finally, what about the experience? <clears throat> Again, when you see, uh, for one reason or another, uh, with the COVID-19, we started to search more for the internet. And then started to write limp lengthening or I've seen hundreds of people speaking that they are the greatest, they have the greatest experience in limb lengthening in the world. Not one. Unfortunately, most of them in the Western world speak that they are, they have the greatest experience on earth in limb lengthening. But what's the surgeon volume? What's the surgeon volume? What's the hospital volume? Most of them, they say they have great experience in Cosmetic lengthening. Do you think cosmetic lengthening is a real experience of limb lengthening? Just putting a corticotomy and putting the frame or putting a nail and you call yourself an experience. If you look to the indications of limb lengthening in our area, one third of the population under the age of 15, so you have lots of problems, congenital problems because of the young age. High instance of neglected problem, high instance of congenital deformities, conflicts. We have high instance of the victims of conflicts, which they require lengthening and deformity correction. So if you think about the experience of limb lengthening, after my trip through the internet in the last two month, three months, with the quarantine and staying at home for such a long time, think about which field. If you are doing limb lengthening, is it allowed for you if you do 300 limb lengthening, cosmetic lengths? Is it allowed for you to say that I'm the greatest experience on the world? Many surgeons, they do only cosmetic lengthening, just cosmetic lengthening. Many of them, they are doing, I think the number of advertisements they do on the internet is far more the number of the cases they do. And do you call this experience Remember again, if you see this list of complications, the surgical load of each patient. Is it 0.1 patient per year? 0.02 patients per year? In conclusion, limb lengthening is a rapidly developing field of orthopedic surgery. Currently, it's a standard procedure with predictable results. And the indications have been extended to include the upper extremities and the cosmetic lengthening. I think experience has a great impact on the results of different procedures because follow-up and management of expected complications are cornerstones of treatment strategy. Unfortunately, the English literature has many papers with relatively few number of patients operated on by many surgeons over such a long period. This means the experience of the individual surgeon is based only on one or few cases per year. Sometimes it's difficult to get valid conclusions from the reported mixed data. In spite of the introduction of the promising intramedullary lengthening nails and the computer-assisted external fixation, we still count on Elizarov biologic law. 
They are all based on Eleazar of biologic blood. Biologic advances through research to stimulate regeneration and reduce the period of treatment will be the rare revolution in the limb lengthening surgery. I believe so. That the real breakthrough will be the biologic advances. How are you going to minimize or to shorten the time till consolidation? If you are interested, you can read my 37 experience in this paper. It's open access. It's published this year. Thank you.